Hello viewers, we'll now take your senior secondary English lesson number 11, Reading with Understanding. So learners, just for your convenience, I have given a title to the first part of the lesson and the title is Restoring Childhood. Before we begin, let's discuss some facts. Child labor is a societal issue that does not lend itself to easy solutions. According to the census 2001, Poverty has trapped over 12.59 million children in labour in India. Untold number of these are girls who are succumbed to age-old traditions and gender discrimination and are doubly marginalised. In a family living in a poverty situation, it is easy to decide that the girl will be the one to drop out of school, help in the kitchen, take care of her siblings and give up her childhood, just like the mother had to. Why is it that we still have to grapple with basics like protecting our children after so many years of independence? At the cost of childhood is a World Vision India report on its learnings from decades of responding to child labour. One of the learnings from this cherished experience is that education is a key weapon in fighting child labour. Every child out of school is a potential child labourer even more so among girls. Every girl out of school heightens the vulnerability of our girls to be exploited and condemned for life to be in the lowest rungs of our society. A girl child labourer. There are many hundreds who drop out of school to take care of siblings, cook and clean, work in the fields and toil in hard labour. Each of these girls will grow into a mother who may not know or agree that child labour deprives a child of her childhood. Now, what is childhood? What are the pleasures of childhood? Do you think little children who had to work as labourers have any childhood to enjoy? How do you define labour? This very present article in the book deals with the exploitation of children born in poverty-stricken families. The author says that girls in particular have no time to childhood. Why does he say so? He says this because in our country and many other underdeveloped countries, girls and other children do a lot of work in the house, so-called domestic setting. Even though they work full-time, there is no accounting of such work. He explains that the domestic labour of girls, even if this may be a full-time work, this is not included in the survey data. Though such work is not good for a child's development, but poverty drives them to such work. Otherwise, survival of such families is at stake. Hence, working for them becomes unavoidable. The author wonders why society is blind to such aspect of a girl's work, or rather, this aspect of a girl's work. He thinks perhaps this is because they don't get paid for the work done in the house. The author explains that domestic work of nurturing and taking care do not get included because they are not visible and hence do not have a market value. The term market value implies those jobs for which children get paid. To clarify further, the author gives example of a boy who works in a small manufacturing unit of gemstones in Jaipur. He is easily visible because he is working in a town and is paid wages. But a girl who cuts grass on a steep mountain slope, even though it is equally dangerous, is ignored. This kind of concept of child labour is not adequate for understanding the real nature and extent of children's work. In India, majority of child labour work as cultivators and agricultural labourers and a variety of domestic chores such as taking care of siblings, grazing cattle or collecting fuel, wood and fodder as part of their daily lives. They do everything, yet they are not accounted in survey reports which gives figures of child labour. Such reports lose their authenticity. The documentation on child labour in India is biased. It has a strong focus 
on children working in hazardous conditions such as that of match or firework factories in Sivakasi or glass works at Firozabad. Studies have also been focused on self-employed children in big metro cities like Delhi, Mumbai, Bangalore, etc. These are the most striking and visible examples of the way society exploits child labor who are denied the right to a healthy childhood. The fact that the spotlight does not fall on children laboring in rural areas shows that the reports given by administration, media and other research agencies are biased towards urban areas. There is a belief that the rural areas are tranquil and calm and hence peaceful and simple to make them more charming. The bias is not peculiar to middle class. To conclude, let us summarize the main points. The article over here which has been mentioned in your lesson deals with the child labor in poor homes. They do not get an opportunity to enjoy their childhood. They are engaged in all kinds of chores. Society is insensitive to their needs. Research data is not authentic because it has a girl versus boys bias. It has a rural versus urban bias. It has visible versus invisible bias. So that was regarding the first part of the lesson. Now that was the first part of the lesson.